this is one of those things that you can actually learn. Just because this hasn't happened to you doesn't mean it can't happen. So the first thing is that you have to be patient and know that anytime you're trying, even if you're trying to masturbate for the first time, you're trying to figure out your G-spot, you know, I had to figure it out on my own. It wasn't happening for me during intercourse. So just know that you got to be patient and that is your ticket to multiple O-land. You might have to put in some time. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. You're listening to Sex with Emily. I'm Dr. Emily and I'm here to help you prioritize your pleasure and liberate the conversation around sex. On today's show, I'm throwing it back to a question on everyone's mind, how to have multiple orgasms. Yes, it's possible. I promise I share in-depth tips for how you can prep your body and mind to make this goal a reality. Plus, I discuss how to make initiating sex an equal playing field while in a dom-sub relationship, ways to take things slow in person with someone you've been sexting with, how to have sex in public without getting caught, and how to get your needs met when your partner is a little sexually selfish. All right, intentions with Emily for each episode. I want to start off by setting an intention for the show, and I encourage you to do the same. So when you're listening, what do you want to get out of this episode? How could it help you? Well, my intention is to help set you up for success the next time you're going out for some multiple O's. We also have a great new article on our site, Ask Emily How to Orgasm During Missionary. If you want to ask me a question, just call my hotline. It's 559-TALK-SEX or 559-825-5739. Just leave me your questions or message me, sexwithemily.com slash askemily. Just include your name, your gender identity, location, age, and how you listen to the show. All right, everyone, enjoy this episode. I need to fill you in on a a little hack here. I'd like to talk to you about multiple orgasms. So just so you know, I'm going to talk about this from the perspective of a vulva owner because I am one. But listen, the same principles apply to penis owners as well. Penis owners just have a longer refractory period after they ejaculate before they can get erect and then orgasm again. So there you have it. There's a lot of women who say to me, I can only have one or it really hurts after or I've never had multiple. And this is one of those things that you can actually learn. Just because it hasn't happened to you doesn't mean it can't happen. So the first thing is that you have to be patient and know that anytime you're trying, even if you're trying to masturbate for the first time, you're trying to figure out your G-spot. You know, I had to figure it out on my own. It wasn't happening for me during intercourse. So just know that you got to be patient and that is your ticket. Like if you want to have a ticket to multiple O-land, you might have to put in some time and that's okay. It's the journey because on the journey, you're going to find that maybe your labia is really sensitive and there's other parts of you that really feel good. So that's okay. And then also remember that a big part of it is You want to be present and you want to stay in the moment the whole time you're figuring this out. So if you are masturbating, let's say you do your normal masturbation routine. So you're present, you're okay that the multiple night might not happen this time, and you're breathing. You want to breathe deep and make sure you have your first orgasm. However you do it, have the orgasm. Take a deep breath after that. You can take your hands off or the vibrator or whatever you're doing and then start to like move your hands over other parts of your body. You can start to touch your nipples. You can start touching around your clitoris. You can rub like the inside of your thighs and just stay connected mentally and physically. But don't like stay connected to your body. Don't be thinking, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? Pay, uh, pay attention to the sensations. Like even after the first orgasm, don't like, I think that we, we have a habit of shutting down after because we've always been done after the first one. So just pay attention to what's happening after that orgasm. Breathe, you know, you don't have to keep touching and then to keep touching your clitoris. And then, you know, think about your clitoris. Think about what could feel good to you. So that is the focal point for a lot of women. That's where they have the orgasm. So if you explore new techniques for stimulating your stuff through like indirect touch, like I said, like other parts of the clitoris, varying your positions. Like for me, I know that you, I can have one, but then I can have my clitoral orgasm, but then there's like my labia and there's, there's like just, it's it's not it's very complex. So know your clitoris. Become clitorate about your own body. Get a mirror. 
Take a look. Check out your clitoris. This is amazing, you guys. If you have a mirror when you are masturbating and you look at your like before and after, even when you're starting, it's really hot. But then you're like, oh, there's my clitoris. And then you see after you've an orgasm, it comes swells, it becomes more engorged. Tara, I don't love the word engorged. I'm talking about it's, it doesn't sound sexy, but it does. It becomes engorged. Yeah. I mean, I guess it could be hot here in Gorge. Seeing, seeing the contractions, the though, contractions too, is actually pretty cool. Right. When you have an orgasm, you, get, you watch the contractions mm-hmm. and you see like, oh my God, that's happening. And then you start to like take your fingers and then you can kind of see where you're going and you can kind of like rub around and then, and then play with like pressures and play with like different strokes. Maybe you want like a lighter touch. Maybe you want... Mm-hmm. A vibrator, use a sex toy, you guys. If you normally have it one way, you could try a G-spot toy. You could try a clitoral toy. Magic wand, I know for me, is like a personal record. I think it was like 23 orgasms. That's insane. And amazing. I mean, I don't think I ever made it out that night. I mean, how would you be? Like, how would your legs even work after that? They won. It was fun, though. I was like, I don't think I want to make it to dinner. Sounds like a great time. It was a good time, I got to say. I'm like, I'm not missing anything right now. So really, it's about teasing yourself, breathing, and knowing that it can happen. Working your Kegel muscles. Very important, you guys. Um, Your Kegel muscles are responsible for your orgasm. Those are the muscles that are contracting. So when when your doctor tells you or when I tell you strengthen your pelvic floor... That's what we mean. Do your Kegels. I like to do like, I'll use the womanizer to get the first one and then I'll use my hands after to get the next one. Yeah. I like kind of Right, because you're already warmed up. Yep, Mm -hmm. I've done that too because you're already going. That's Mm -hmm. great. You could use the vibrator for the first one and then see like what else feels good. And of course, sex toys can be a great way to multiply your orgasms even more. So let's talk about using toys and with these multiple orgasms. So the magic wand Love the magic wand. I'm telling you, I had my first multiples using a magic wand. But I also had the Jeju products along with me. So here's the deal. For most vulva owners, it helps to have a clitoral orgasm first. Because then once you have your clitoral orgasm, you become more aroused. There's more blood flow. And then you can use a G-spot toy. And I highly recommend the UMA, U-M-A by Jeju. Because the UMA is a really cool insertion toy and it's a beautiful toy and it's perfectly contoured to hit all those pleasure spots. You can even, and I've done this, use their Mimi Soft, which I also love the Mimi. It's a handheld external vibe. You can put that on your clitoris. You can put the UMA inside and hello, multiple orgasms. You could use the Mimi first, have the orgasm, and then put the Uma inside. They also have a beautiful Kegel set. Now, let me tell you about this. Kegels, you know, know, doing your Kegel exercises helps you build your pelvic floor muscles. Well, when your pelvic floor muscles are stronger, you can have more orgasms. And I love their Kegel set because it comes with three different Kegel balls. They're essentially weights. So you wear the first one, and I've done this multiple times. There are three progressive weights. There's a soft weight in a single ball to a hard and more heavy double ball. So the Ami, which is the name of their Kegel set, it really helps because it's kind of like, think of it like your vagina's personal trainer. And that's what I did. When I was using it, I used the lighter weight that I moved up the next week. And I just wear these around when I'm working out. I'll wear it you know, during the day at work. And because you're wearing them and it does your kegels for you while you're walking around because your muscles are naturally contracting, keeping them inside of you. So it's kind of genius and I love their kegel set. So that also will help contribute to more orgasms. Some other great products, um, Dame products are fabulous. They're a women-owned company, friend of mine, Alex, and they have this really cute new vibe called Kip. And it's a lipstick vibrator and it's ergonomic. So it gives you either pinpointed stimulation and it's great for clitoral stimulation. And I love, love, love that it's powerful and waterproof and it comes in a travel friendly package so you can bring it anywhere you go. So those are some fun toys to play with and to help you get on your multiple orgasm spree. Let me know how it goes. Oh, speaking of multiple orgasms, of course you can... Anally counts as well. And I recommend if you've never done any anal play or you want to get into some butt plugs and some fun things, B Vibe is all things anal all the time. So Alicia Sinclair, also a friend of mine, started this business and her toys are so well made. They have a beginner anal kit. They have every kind of butt plug. 
that you've ever thought of, anything about anal play, and they're also about education. So there's great information on their site, and that is B-Vibe. So those are some fun ones to get you started. Oh, the other tip, definitely use lube. Yeah. Oh, have you not heard that I'm obsessed with lube? Change your mindset about it. Like know that like it can happen and it will happen if you just have patience and you breathe and you just explore. And so all the things I talk about, masturbation doesn't excite you, maybe a goal-oriented like, let me see what else I can experiment with to have more pleasure. And nipple orgasms, also very popular, you guys. If Mm. you have not had one, it doesn't mean that you can't have one. So another fun thing is just like, playing with your nipples and lube. Like after you have an orgasm, like go up there because the clitoris and the nipples both share the same part of the brain, which is why a nipple orgasm is really possible for a lot of women, but they just don't know because they don't spend enough time touching it. These are all the paths to pleasure, you guys. Multiples. If you have any more questions about it, you can totally call us. You can call us about anything. But I think you'll be amazed at all the pleasure that your body can deliver you just by having a little patience and a little fun and taking some breaths and um, making your pleasure a priority. Whether you're in a relationship or out of a relationship, your pleasure should be a priority, especially your sexual health and pleasure. Let's talk to Tristan, 36 in California, who wants to know how he can have his fiance initiate sex more in their relationship. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> yeah, right? Um, I'm all right. Coming up on my year anniversary tomorrow. So. Oh, how many years? One year. One year. Oh, happy anniversary. I hope it was a good year. Thank you. So has, mm-hmm. she, has she ever initiated before? No. Okay. So here's the thing. A lot of women just never do. We're used to men doing it. It was never part of our thing. So she Mm -hmm. probably doesn't know how, really. Like she could, like she could think about it, but it's like might be scary to her. She wouldn't know where to start or she just doesn't think like that. So what you could do is tell her, well, first of all, back up. Have you guys ever talked about your sex life? Oh yeah, we've talked about it. We've thought about it. (laughs) Okay, so have you ever said to her what, that's good. Have you ever told her that you thought it'd be really hot if she initiated? Oh, yeah. Numerous okay. times. And it doesn't happen. So here's why. She needs no. to know what that looks like for you. So, Tristan, it might be as simple as, like, you kiss my neck. But but tell her specifically what it looks like. Because she might be going, oh, I forgot again. I'm out in the mood. I didn't know. Like, it becomes stressful, which I know might seem silly to you because you're like, I've been doing it all year long. But for women, right. yeah, right, yeah. But it's really common. I get this question a lot. So this is my best solution for you is just to like tell her specifically what do you know what it would look like for you? Yeah, I have an idea. Okay. Would you feel comfortable telling definitely. her? Definitely. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. So that's I don't how you know do why it. I, I don't know why I have it. Because like, uh, we have a relationship where I'm the dom. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, we have all our toys, whips and stuff like that. But I, I, I backed off from that so much. Why? In a sense, I, I, I got tired of doing all uh, the work. Oh, oh, I totally get it. Okay, so Tristan, I get it. So, so here's the thing: you're the dom, you're doing all the things. She doesn't, she doesn't think of it as work. She just, her brain isn't there. She doesn't. She's never had to do the work that you're talking about. So this is a conversation about her, like learning some new skills, essentially. And without okay. you, when you, when you have to talk with her, you can't be like, I do all the work. Can't believe you, you know what I mean? That's the right. dynamic that you set up, right? That you both set up. So right. now it's like, you have to tell mm-hmm. her like, you know, it would make me feel really loved and really be such a turn on if I came home and you were lying on the bed wearing this thing that I bought, wearing a negligee and then you had the toys out and then you, whatever it is. And then she'd have a script, right? Mm-hmm. And then you, she could see if she likes right. it. So that's all it is. And you're, fr- you're already at the front frustration point, but just give her a little time here. And remember that like, then you can ask her what turns her on. How does she like it when you initiate the most? And you guys could figure out what your next level is. Make a plan for your, on your anniversary. Why don't you guys write a sex plan for the year? What do you guys want to try? Do a bucket right. list. Exchange. Say, let's play a fun sex game. Let's each write down three things we want to try in the next year, you know? And like, have fun. Mm-hmm. By next quarter, we want to be, you know, I don't know what you guys want. Do an anal. Swinging from the rafters. All right. That's a fun a- anniversary thing to do, I think. Figure out your sex plan. Prioritize pleasure this year. Yeah, yeah Tristan. So there you go. It's all going to yeah, get better. Definitely. This Thank is you. your year. You're so welcome. Happy anniversary. It's the best gift ever, I think. What else do you want? Talk about your sex life on your anniversary in a really fun, positive way. You guys can always email us questions, feedback at sexwithemily.com. Next up, we have Melissa, 53, and she's met a guy online who wants to jump right into sex before even going on a date. 
Hi. 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 <laughs> Tell me everything. Well, so actually, so we he, he's been on a project, and so he hasn't been in town for the last month. So we have been talking on the phone or in doing a lot of sexting. And, I mean, he's really hot about, like, the things he likes to do or wants to do. or And he's constantly reaching out to me throughout the day or in the evening and that kind of thing. And he's like, when I wrap up this project, I'd love for us to, you know, I'd like to take you out and all of that. He goes, but I just feel like we've been through so much. He's like, can we just go ahead and jump into the sex and then go out to dinner? Yeah. And, and there's a part of me who's like, oh, my God, I, you know, I I would love to. But then there's a part of me who's like, okay, Michelle, you know, yeah. you're, you're being crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think, wait, and you've never met him, right? Right. Okay. Right. You sent an email, correct? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. We got oh, emails awesome. and our cell phones and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. We got Trima. Awesome. I think that you should go to dinner with him and you've never met him. Just remember that. Sexting and words are just a right. tiny part of the whole equation. Like with body language and actually seeing him in person and smelling him and the whole presence. And you got to see if you actually are going to want to have sex with him. So no to sex before dinner. Mm-hmm. Not this time. Go to dinner. See okay. if you like him. Meet him in a public place. You might feel totally different. So it feels really great that he asked that, but to be like, oh, that'd be great, but that'll have to be our dessert. Let's get dinner. That's what I think. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Dessert. Yeah, yeah. get to oh know him. God. We can wait right, another cool. through a meal. Yeah. And then let us know what happens. I want to see if you still like this guy. <laughs> I know, guy. for God's sake, you can wait an hour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've never even met. Like, why do we got to jump right to sex, right? No, have him bite, get some dinner, get some food and you see if you actually like this guy who's a great sexter. Believe me, I've dated many great texter slash sexter and then I realized I liked them more on the phone than I did in person. That happens. Right. So I'm like, could you just go in another room and sex me? Okay, you're so welcome, Melissa. Let's let uh, us know how it goes. We'll be here. Remember, you guys, the sexting, you never met someone, you don't know anyone until you meet them. And also, our pictures of us is not who we are. Exactly. So it's such a small part. Small part, you guys. So remember, I think it's always best to... I think it's okay to have sex with someone right away. We all do it. We've all done it. But I think the longer you can wait to actually have sex, whether you're in a relationship or not, or it's the first time, the better it is for the relationship and for the sex. We all love a tease. We all love the drawing out of the sex and the tension. That can be some of the best part of sex. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're on to your calls. Let's talk to Griffin, 22 in Massachusetts, who's tried having sex outside, but then he got caught by his parents. Hey, Griffin. Hey there. How you doing? Uh, when did that happen? Well, oh my God, it, it was bad. Okay. It was really, really bad. <laughs> okay, tell me what, when. All right. All right. So it happened, I would say, a couple of weeks ago okay. when the, the weather was very nice out and, you know, we were having a lot of sex. So we want to, you know, make things interesting. So we were outside. You know, there weren't a lot of cars around. Familiar neighborhood. So we were like, all right, let's get on top of the car and let's make it interesting. So I said, all right, she's down for it. We get on top of the car. We start fucking. And I'm near my house, but, you know, thinking me like, oh, you know, there'll be no problems. And so I'm just honestly. On top of the car naked fucking. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm going to town. And all of a sudden, my mom and my dad pull up, oh, no. and they park right next to me. Oh, and, and, they're, and they're asking, oh, like, what's going on? And my dad's laughing. And so I'm just, I, I get off the car. I mean, we're caught at this point. Right. And, and my mom's yelling at me, like, Wait, but you were in your driveway dad, of your home? No, I was like, in, I was like the street over. <laughs> and, like, so and they were neighbor- trying to get home. Oh, the street over at night? Like, I don't know. Maybe go, like, into another neighborhood? I mean, is that the street thing? I know. But still, that's hilarious. I wasn't wasn't thinking at the time, but it was daytime. That was the problem. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. So what what happened, Griffin? Your dad was laughing. And your mom, what? Oh, my mom was horrified because, you know, my penis was out. That's never a uh, a good moment. What about your girlfriend? What was your girlfriend doing? Uh, 
my girlfriend just completely got off the car, jumped into the car and was hiding and just put on a sweatshirt. Uh, she put on my sweatpants. Oh my God, so I would be just, dying. I would be dead if my boy, oh. if I, yeah. But good, but good on you for a little, little experimental. Oh, well, my, dad, my dad yelled at me. My dad tried giving me hints after how I wasn't hitting it right was the worst part after it. <laughs> I love your dad. He's like, son, yeah, he- son, let me talk to you about this. Don't do the jackhammer. That doesn't feel good yeah. to her when you are hamming her away like that. <laughs> well, he gave me credit because I was using protection at least. So. Oh, oh, there you go. Points for protection. <laughs> I got a thumbs up. I no, got a thumbs yeah, up. yeah, Griffin, you you did good. I I love that Griffin brought a condom for the outdoor spontaneous sex. But you know, next time I guess we'll make decisions outside the neighborhood. That is an amazing story, Griffin. I love it. It was crazy. That is yeah. so great. So your dad's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but really, yeah, I guess well, you got to be more. Well, and no, father like son. Like yeah. father like son. He gave you some tips. Yeah, oh my god, that. Griffin, that's a great. So, how's your girlfriend doing? Is she recovered? Because I know if I was twenty, I'd be like mortified. I think at first it was a little horrifying, and it was probably the last time we'll ever fuck outside. But right. I mean, but now you said you it, did it. it was an experience. It was a great experience. Okay, that was a great, and it was, we joined it too. I feel like we were there with you. So now, thank you for passing that along. You made our night. Oh no problem, no problem. I mean, it was interesting. It, it was it was actually one of the best. You know, one of our best times. Of, Having sex, I mean, it was warm out. I was feeling good. I, I mean, I went to town. Or she loved it. So maybe yeah. I didn't get to finish with the problem, but you know, my parents saw my penis. But but yeah, but but um, but I love it. It's going to be a good story. You'll never forget it. So you know, never forget. And that. I'll never forget it either. I mean, don't let it stop you from having sex, crazy, doing wild things. But you know, now you got something else to try. What's next on the bucket list? Well, we've already fucked inside of a Chili's before, but inside of a Chili's. Like in the bathroom or just... Restaurant. No, I know the restaurant. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, well, you guys sound fun. Just, you know, be safe. Keep yeah, calling. I gotta us. keep it interesting. You, got, you do, Griffin, 22-year-old man. This is good, Griffin. Yep. We're all learning a lot from you. We all need to keep it interesting at all age, at every time, at every stage of the relationship. And it's not that hard. Just don't get caught. Of course, I'm in my prime right now. You I gotta, are, man. I gotta go, go, go get it. Yeah, go Griffin. Griffin, do it with you. You grab your condoms and just fly into the universe and do you. He's like a superhero. Yes, sir. All right, Griffin, Dude. thanks for calling. You're the best. Call us back. Keep us posted. <laughs> I love that story. Oh, my God. I love. I can see the dad like, son, you know, son, really? Oh, man, because we were. Ta- I was afraid because yesterday we were talking about fantasies people have. We were talking about sex in public. Mm-hmm. And that was our whole thing. That We did a little, little segment on it. And then I thought... Holy shit, Griffin did it last night and he got caught. But no. he was doing it before us. Yeah. That's a great story. Next up, we have Sherry, 51 in Nevada, whose lover can be pretty selfish, both in and outside of the bedroom. Hi. Well, okay, big fan. Thank you. I enjoy your show. Thank you very much. Of course. Um, the problem I have is I've been dating um, this guy for nearly five years. And... He's very selfish. He doesn't uh, reciprocate oral. He, he, I tell him the moves that I enjoy that will um, allow me to have an orgasm. He's, he's done it once. Right. I'll remind him and tell him, oh, I really love it when you do that. I really love it when you do this. And he may or may not do it. Most times he won't, but... Okay. I'm the type of lover where I'm I'm very giving. I'll do whatever it takes to right. make him, you know, come and get there. Right. And no, I get oh, it. You're... As long as it takes. Yeah, of course. Well, yeah. have you? So, Sherry, here's what the deal. So, this is a really just so you know, like this happens a lot, right? You're like, I told him, I told him, and like, why wouldn't he do it? He loves me. So, here's the thing. He just does it, even though you've told him. I think you got to talk about it. I know you have to talk to him about it in a way that he can actually hear. Like, not just a one-time thing, but like an outside-the-bedroom where you're like, listen, I really love you and our relationship, but I feel that 
I feel so much more turned on and attracted to you when, like, when you go down on me, it feels so good when you, like, do this thing with your tongue. And I know that you know that because I've told you. And I'm just wondering, like, I feel like I need it. Like, I, I require it. Like, foreplay, like, not just a suggestion, a requirement. So I'm curious if you have ideas around, like, why, is there a reason maybe why that doesn't happen as much? Or tell me your thoughts about it. How do you feel about that, that that's what I need? Well, I find that most of the, well, this is how it'll go. It's like foreplay. It's like he enjoys me going down, so I I do it. I enjoy it also. But then we have sex, and then it's over. It's So do you're not having five, orgasms? I've had one. In five years? Yes. Sherry, 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 there's an <laughs> orgasm deficit going on, and I... We need to feel it. Sherry. I, just, I know. I, I, I enjoy everything else, but he's only... What else? You know, brought me to climax one time. He does it. Okay, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, right? I'm going to give you... He's like a lot of men. He doesn't know. Like, literally, he's never had a woman in his life share the information with him that women do not orgasm, mostly during intercourse. Only 20% do. Like, like, I just, but I feel like that's why, unless he's just, I mean, then I'm going to say, is he selfish in other, is there other ways in the relationship that this feels familiar to you? Yes. Okay. Look, for example? Um, gifts, <laughs> things like that. Gift giving, um, he, he doesn't go all out, but enjoys right. yeah. reciprocating. Right, right. So he's selfish a little bit. He doesn't really take care of your. Sure. He doesn't. He doesn't take care of your needs. No. You don't feel nurtured by him. No. Right. So it's kind of like all. It's all the things. So I don't know if it's just about the sex, but it's. And how long have you guys been together? Um, nearly five years. Near five years. Oh yeah, you said five years. Okay, and it's been happening. Okay, so, so have you ever had any talks? Like, is this your guy? Like, you're with him for forever, whatever that means, or a long time? Um, well, you know. I yeah, well, <laughs> I yeah. won't say forever. No, I get but it. I enjoy him. I mean, he's a sweet guy and everything. I love him. But, and, and like I said, with, we have fun. We have a good time. I enjoy having sex with him. Right. Okay, so maybe he you just know, needs some it, little, like, like just, I think he just needs some reminders here about... Um, about what, like, here's the thing, he, there's information he doesn't have. And that is that, like, that's foreplay, like, it's, and I and I agree, like, Sherry, I came, you like, your generation, like, we we just gave blowjobs, like, that's what we did. I didn't expect oral sex in return. Most men weren't offering it up. But it's a new time now, Sherry, and we require, like, all the studies and science and, like, women, the, we are told, and men believe it too, not their fault, really. This is what we see, that penetration is the, that's where, it, that's the main act. The main act is when his penis goes inside of you and oh my God, because that's the main act for them. Because women didn't know how to speak up as much about it. So I think that there's just going to have to be like a talk with him. You let him know, like, I require these things, like like oral and foreplay, like I do too. I'm actually, it makes me, and I, when you do it, I feel so good. So you're not like saying, why haven't you? And I'm mad and why don't you know this? But you encourage him, let him know that it turns you on. It's actually something that's like an, a deal, but like you need, you require it. Foreplay right. and oral and like you could like say and let me know what else you might need from me. But like I think it's time five years in that we really have a great I was driving along, listening to the show, and she was talking about couples and communication, how important it is for them to talk about their sex lives all the time. And I realized we haven't talked about it much. So I started thinking about what we could do to you know make it even take it to the next level. And here's some thoughts. What do you okay. think? What are your ideas? And then you might have to have it again next week. Don't be afraid to sh to keep having these conversations with him if he's your guy. You might as well figure out if he can give you what you've been giving to him because you deserve it. And you will find someone right. who demands they go down on you. Like they'll be like, I am not even putting my penis anywhere near you until I go down on you for 20 minutes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what I, what that's, I want. Right. Like, you yeah, should have that. Like, you should have that. I, you, we you should all have that. I if, I, you're like, like do everything you, for him. I know. So he just has got lazy. He doesn't have to think he has to. Yeah. No one's ever given consequences. No one's ever called him on it. Maybe his mom took care of everything. You know, you're taking care of everything. I don't know, but he just, 
I just like yeah. to give him the benefit of the doubt that that we've grown up in a certain time and societal norms and no one ever called it out and he's not listening to the show and he doesn't get it. So let's just try it out. Try some like, no, and but don't get like apologetic. And don't, I'm sorry, because you're a pleaser, it sounds like, so am I, so I know. Like it's weird and awkward to state for what we, it takes a while. Like you got to learn to set boundaries and ask for what you want. But you, I'm telling you, girl, you deserve this. And you got a, you haven't had it for five years. One orgasm. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Like, I need you to move. I need you to have this conversation today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can call me back. You can just do the first step because it's going to be hard. I'm telling you, not hard, but like, it, you don't often have these conversations. Most people don't. But just know that just once you start, you can't mess it up by speaking your truth and how it feels. And don't worry about hurting his I did feelings. Say something. You did. Well, okay. See, that's where it is. I. I did say something, and that was really difficult for me to do, and I felt good that I said it, but just nothing changed. Well, because we don't, you know why? Nothing changes. No, we don't make behavioral changes based on one suggestion from someone. Like, you know how many friends told me I should meditate before I did, or maybe you should take a yoga, you know, like, like go to the gym or eat healthy. Like, I know I shouldn't be eating gluten or whatever it is. You told him once, and he changed, or twice, but to actually change behavior, you need to do some more explaining to him, Sheree, where you're like, this is why it makes me feel good. I actually, that's how I get turned on. It makes me feel love from you. For whatever reason, he's not prioritizing your pleasure and he needs to. And you're going to find out soon enough if you are strong and have this conversation, but in a loving way, and you see if anything changes, give him a month from now, because then you'll be in it for five more years. And I want, I can't have you wait that long for another orgasm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, sure. You keep so me posted. Much. I'll be here. Thank you. I will. Let me know. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Be sure to like, subscribe, and give us a review wherever you listen to podcasts and share this with a friend or a partner. Believe me, if you got something out of this, they will too. We release two to three episodes a week. Find me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. It's all at Sex with Emily. If you want to ask me a question about sex, dating, or relationships, you can email me feedback at sexwithemily.com or sexwithemily.com slash askemily. And check out my website. We have so many articles on there helping you better sex. And you can check out our guides at sexwithemily.com slash guides for free guides that will give you expansive tips and activities. Sign up for our weekly emails because, hey, I've been told I give really good emails. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. Oh,